I have the Griffith Park Observatory right behind us. We have the views of the city here. And normally you might be a little upset that you have construction going on next door, but I can't complain because that's actually my next project. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. We have got a great show for you this week filled with creative, unique and dramatic homes and I am bringing it all to you from this bright and beautiful penthouse on the Upper West Side. This duplex is defined by its natural light that streams through the skylights in this impressive open great room. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite this jaw dropping. Check out the easy flow between the living and dining areas and the open kitchen, featuring oversized windows that frame neighborhood views, classic architectural moldings, and original hardwood floors. But the best part of it all is that it spills out onto one of the largest private outdoor spaces on the Upper West Side. How's that for a wow factor? And at about 2,000 square feet, can you imagine the possibilities out here? The home also has four bedrooms, including a charming primary suite. And speaking of charming, we are getting started in Park Slope, Brooklyn at the townhouse of artist Ippolito Rostagno. While she is best known for her bold and beautiful jewelry, she is also the founder of Artemis, a curated collection of Italian decor and design inspiration, all of which can clearly be seen in her own live work home and studio. Take a look and get inspired. Hello, my name is Ippolita. I'm an artist, I'm a jewelry designer, and I'm also the founder of Artemist, the online destination for everything fabulous made in Italy. So the house is a mixture of original structure that has been modernized, juxtaposed with very decorative art and objects and decor and furnishings. I really wanted to make it reflect my own aesthetic, which is maximalist but clean. Let's go inside and see where I live and work. This area right here links the living room with the kitchen, anchored by this mid-century casina couch, which I love. And I made this little table to kind of go with it in the same style. And then there are two root side tables that add some organic interest. I love collecting items of decor when I'm traveling, and I got these lamps, and I love them because they're funny. And a little bit of humor in decor is always good. I wanted to point out these bookshelves that I designed, which are part of the architectural theme of the house, which is cold rolled steel and solid walnut. There's also these pocket doors that I designed because while it's wonderful to live in an open space, it's also nice to close the doors. During the renovation, in order to maintain the open floor plan, we had to consolidate all of the plumbing and electric in one area. So I made this column, and then I had these beautiful tiles made by an Italian artist to go from floor to ceiling. While I love the inside of my house, this is why I live in Brooklyn. My inspiration here was the Italian table, the Italy that I grew up in. So the joy of that idea is something that I wanted to bring right here. These glasses, for example, are hand etched with little scenes of the forest. And because I like mixing new and old, the silverware is from my great grandmother. And it's also very cute and ornate. I love the wildness of this secret garden. And here we have the bedroom, the walk-in closet, and the bathroom. So here in the bedroom, there's this wonderful Italian Florentine mirror that I had made. There's modern art over the bed. I bought the sconces. They have rock crystal details. And the light, of course, feels very Italian, like the whole environment. And the Venetian plaster on the wall sort of completes that look. I want to show you something amazing that I made. It's a closet door. As you can see, it's see-through and it's sculptural. So it looks like my jewelry. So to me, this was bringing life and work together. Mm -hmm. 
This is my studio, my office. It's where I design my jewelry and where I run Artemis. This is the most wonderful room in the whole house for me because it's so full of light and it's so beautiful and serene. Here I have two incredible Brazilian chairs. Between the chairs, there's a huge mirror made out of a window from a ship. The lights in this room are industrial and I wanted to have an industrial feel up here to declutter from overly designing the space and making it extremely functional. I hope you've enjoyed getting a glimpse into how I live and how I work. For me, one of the most important ideas is the idea that art matters because it brings joy to your everyday life. And so it's an important part of sort of the journey to find ways of expressing that and find things to put around you that really make you feel at home. So thanks so much for coming. Coming up, we are at the home of celebrity hairstylist Chaz Dean. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. While the life of an in-demand hairstylist is anything but calm, Chaz Dean, founder of the hair and skin line WEN, who has studios on both coasts, including New York's West Village, strives for a zen-like calm both at work and at home. Now he gives us a tour of his own peaceful refuge in Los Feliz. Take a look. I'm Chaz Dean with WEN Hair and Body Care and I want to show you around my home. Come on in. Inside my home, you're going to see it's all intertwined and all connected between my paintings, between my products, between my garden, because I'm all about nature. I love living in this area. When guests come to my home, this is usually the first room they go to is my living room. It's very zen. I have my amethyst here. Now, what I love about this space is connecting it to the outside. I like feeling like you're almost kind of living in a tree house. I also bring the outdoors in, whether it's with my orchids, my crystals, my stones. I love being connected to nature, and you're gonna see that throughout this tour as well. This is like the heart of my home, it really is. I've lived here for almost nine years, but I leave my table set like this every day. It just feels like it's so welcoming. So I've hosted some incredible parties, whether it's birthday parties or New Year's Eve parties, and I've been able to seat 15 people at this table. It feels like welcome to my home and just relax. And one of the second things my guests notice is this painting. It's actually three separate paintings connected as one. This is my many blessings. You'll see 613, you'll see love. All meaningful parts of my life are in this painting. And speaking of blessings, it's time to give Bella and Riley their blessing. So if you don't know, these are my angels, Bella with the pink collar, Riley with the purple collar. They're sisters, litter mates, and they are my love, my heart. They're used to being on screen, part of our branding. They're on my Win Pets bottles, so they're probably more famous than I am. Welcome to my inner sanctuary. This is a very zen space for me, and it's like I'm in an outdoor bedroom, connected to the jacuzzi, the outdoor fireplace, and nature. I've created a warm, comfortable space with the texture of the cork wallpaper, which I love, my lighting fixtures, which are vintage, and then the tile in the bathroom. I'm obsessed with it because no matter what time of day it is, it's never the same. It catches different lighting each day of the week because it's so reflective. So if you haven't noticed, textures mean everything to me, colors mean everything to me, nature means everything to me. And speaking of nature, I can't wait to show you my garden. I love my garden, I live off my garden. We have tons of cucumbers, my eggplants, my corn, and so much more. This year has been the best my garden has been in the past three years. And to finish the tour, I wanna to take all of you to my rooftop deck. Is it fair to say that this might be Bella and Riley's favorite spot of the house? I have the Griffith Park Observatory right behind us. We have the views of the city here. And normally you might be a little upset that you have construction going on next door, but I can't complain because that's actually my next project. I call it GX and you guys are all invited.
Thank you for joining me on this tour. Had a great time. I will see you next time. And remember, always follow your dreams and your passion. Coming up just after the break, we are at the home and studio of this Brooklyn-based artist and designer. Welcome back everyone. Artist and architect Umberto Bolardi Ricci is well known in the design world for his sculptural yet functional works of art that interact with their spaces and echo the architecture of the city in innovative and surprising ways. Now he shows us how he lives with his pieces at his Clinton Hill apartment and where he creates conveniently nearby. Take a look. My name is Umberto Bellati Ricci. I'm an architect and designer. Welcome to my studio in the Brooklyn Navy Yards. A lot of my work has developed most recently in New York City, facing the beautiful skyline of Manhattan. And all around you see my pieces at different stages of their design, from prototypes to final results. And every time I walk in, I'm inspired. I've been described as a minimalist. This chair is a good example of this. It's a folded plane of metal with another floating horizontal plane of the leather seat. Here's a Luca table with a travertine top and bronze patina legs. The surprisingly organic shape actually is derived from the silhouette of my wife Tiana when she had our first son Luca and it was just a sketch denoting the, the shape of a pregnant woman. For the sofa, it was very important to me to contrast the rawness of the steel I-beam legs with the softness of the upholstered cushion. Because ultimately, all of my furniture is not just to be looked at, but also used. There's something very architectural about designing lights, because also architecture, they say, is all about light and shadow. A lot of my work has developed actually facing the beautiful skyline of Manhattan, which has a lot of very sculptural vertical pieces, which is very much also present in my work. For instance, this piece, the mano, which refers to the hand, almost like protecting a candle or a flame. The outside is in mirror polished brass, which reflects the space around it, and the inside is a brushed brass, but it still reflects the warm candlelight light source. When I moved to New York, I started folding medals. This is one of the first pieces that has a roll and a fold, and I love the, the texture of it, the reflectivity, the shininess, and how you can play with it with light. This light is, like many things in the studio, is a prototype. It's a Möbius strip, so it's a continuous curve, and it's almost like an oyster. It holds this light source in itself. So now that I've shown you my studio, let me show you my home. Welcome to my home in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. So this is our main living area, which contains our dining room, our living room, and our open eat-in kitchen. For the living area, I started with my Travis sofa, which sits on these I-beams. It's in a beautiful Italian Deda Boucle. It faces one of my first prototypes of the Luca table. So I do enjoy this contrast of this industrial mass-produced pieces with these very personal, warm, soft textures and materials. So I just want to make sure that those pieces are beautiful to look at, but also comfortable to live with. For the dining area, I wanted to design a window seat. I made this beautiful aluminum folded sea bench, as we call it. Facing the bench, I have these stools I designed, which are also in industrial steel as a base, but with these very soft, boucle Italian fabrics. Above my dining table, I designed a light, a pendant. It mimics a roofscape in Europe, and it has a warm, almost candlelight glow that warms up any dinner party. And for me, lighting is a very magical element and that illuminates our lives and our spaces. I love designing spaces and I hope I could share some of my excitement and enjoyment with you today. And thank you so much for coming to see my home and my studio. Coming up, we are keeping things in the County of Kings at the family abode of this Brooklyn architect. Welcome back everyone, now we're on the waterfront in Brooklyn at the apartment of architect Eric Lifton. Eric used an innovative approach to materials and spatial configurations to turn his family home into a living laboratory of design. Take a look and maybe a few notes.
What architecture has the ability to do is to combine traditional materials with new technologies that let us see things in a different way. And that's what I did here. I'm Eric Lifton. I'm an architect. I'm the principal of Mesh Architectures, and this is my home. This is the main space. This is the living room, the dining room, the kitchen. It's the spot where Luna, our dog, is gonna greet you. When I found this place, it was totally raw. The building was under construction, but the views were amazing. Even though the apartment itself is not huge, you feel like you're living in this expansive space because of the continual view over the water. So I set up this living room around this very large sofa that the whole family and other people as well can get on. It's great for taking in the view, but also the intimacy of sitting in front of the fireplace right here. It's kind of the all-purpose space where everyone can come together. This table here, I designed and made this out of pulling pipe, which is something I've been doing for 30 years now. The lights too are made out of pipes. So it's a way of repurposing something and using it to make something that you dream up inside your head. The fireplace is this great mid-century design and it provides a cozy fireplace feeling in a very compact package. This unit back here, which I designed, is pretty cool because it's actually double-sided. On this side, you access the stereo and the projector and the turntable and the LPs, but then the upper part is accessed from the other side where it's a bookshelf for the stair going up to the roof. This is not just a dining area. This is an all-purpose table that we gather around to do all kinds of activities. These chairs are designed by Jasper Morrison for Vitra. They're beautiful chairs, very simple. This carpet we bought in Istanbul. These are the rugs where they take scraps of old rugs and they recycle them and sew them together and dye them. It's a cool process. I like recycling. I like to keep things simple and fairly minimal, but there's always a texture. There's always something that draws you in. It's never a blank minimalism that is alienating. So the kitchen is incredibly important. I spend a lot of time here. I love to cook. This is what I call a corral kitchen. It surrounds me and gives me quick and easy access to everything I need as I cook. So it's incredibly efficient and it's just a pleasure to be in here, have the views. I can see if someone's watching a movie over there. It just feels great to be in here. This is our bedroom. It's a really nice haven. There's a nice pipe light fixture on the ceiling and one on each side of the bed here. Right off the bedroom is our bathroom, a nice generous space with a shower, and it has the little marble hexagonal tiles on the wall, which I love because they are like cutting up a piece of marble into little pixels and reassembling them on the wall. Home is like a microcosmic urban space. And when you have great design, it inspires you to live your best life and it gives you a space to do that. And that's what I've done with my own home. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Coming up, writer's block be gone at this unique retreat in Greenwich, Connecticut. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Greenwich, Connecticut with architect Eric J. Smith. Eric was tasked with designing a writer's studio on his client's idyllic property. With nods to Thoreau and Frank Lloyd Wright, Eric created a unique haven that is both reflective of and inspired by nature. Take a look. My name is Eric Smith. I'm an architect, and for most of my career, I've built traditional homes based on classical design principles. Today, I'd like to share with you something a little bit different this contemporary writer's studio purpose-built for the pursuit of poetry. I believe that every home tells a story. The story of this home begins right here in the backwoods of Southern Connecticut. It was while walking through these woods that my client began to reflect on his boyhood fascination with Thoreau's cabin. He asked me to design a place inspired by Thoreau's cabin. Not a replication, but a reinterpretation of it. A place of solitude, solace, and the pursuit of art. Approaching head-on like this, one only sees walls of layered stone, in many ways as impenetrable as a blank sheet of paper. I wanted the design of this building to actually represent the creative process of an artist. That begins with this entry portal. It's not unlike any choice that an artist makes, whether they're going to start the process or not. One has to choose to enter. Now for the real surprise. 
As you enter, on either side are bookshelves filled with books of poetry. It's as if there are thousands of words cheering you on. So the bookcases and the other built-ins that we have here have been pulled away from the building, almost as if floating within the stone enclosure. The space compresses with a lower ceiling height. I did this as a transition from the exterior scale of the trees and nature to a more human scale of this retreat. You'll also notice that we brought the exterior stone walls inside, giving a sense of permanence, of solidness. The floor and ceilings are fumed American white oak, straight grained as if right off the Sawyer's Mill. So as you look at the details, the craftsmanship is self-evident. What appears simple is masterly. So the client wanted this building to function as a home. This kitchen was laid out somewhat like a ship's galley. We have a built-in refrigerator, cabinet, concealed cabinets up above. And this countertop is actually from a 200-year-old oak tree. We kept the live edge to kind of speak back to the nature of oak, both in its milled form and its natured form. When it's time for a nap or a little recharge, we built in this berth. Below what looks like a regular counter and cabinet, there's actually a pull-out bed to recharge. All of this floats within the stone enclosure. And speaking of floating, that's exactly what I wanted this writer's room to feel like. It's cantilevered out over the stream bed, and it floats amongst the trees, almost as if we're a tree dweller. In this three-sided writer's room, at the two ends, there are two symmetrical balconies, sliding glass opens so that you can step out and back into the nature that you left at the entry portal. Every writer obviously needs a good writing desk. And we custom built this desk inspired by the chair I'm sitting in, which was a Sam Maloof chair. And there's nothing better than a comfortable chair when you're working hard over your desk on your next poem. But the real focal point of this structure is this piece of glass. The main piece of glass in this writer's studio measures 16 feet long and weighs over 2,000 pounds. And the amazing view, 360 degrees, that we're able to see out into nature. The space itself is focused opposite the bed to a large rock, which we affectionately call the writer's rock as opposed to a writer's block. Other than the treetops, this is the highest point around. So it was obvious that we had to create this rooftop terrace to take advantage of this place. Small in size, yet expansive in experience, this studio, in its very essentialism, suggests with thoughtful design, we can live creatively and comfortably in sync with the nature around us. Thanks for coming. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>